that's my favorite part about it, is that you exchange words instead of fists. It took a long time for human beings to come to this point. This is why I am, at my heart, an optimist. That instead of... Despite Twitter. Despite Twitter, for the most part. For the most part, an optimist. And we'll talk about that. Like, why, you know, why, is, why is a free expression guy getting up here and telling folks he doesn't like the place that is a free-for-all for free expression, right? We'll talk about that. Um, but the general idea is that you can disagree with somebody without killing them because they're a, a different race, religion, etc. They, they view politics differently. That's a relatively recent innovation. It's a relatively recent innovation, and I would like to keep it. Here is former President Barack Obama. And President Obama here is making an interesting point, saying, look, you don't agree with somebody, talk to them, argue with them, but you are too strong just to say, shut up, right? You don't need to say shut up to protect yourself. You can ignore the other person, you can debate them and change their mind, you can ask them a hard question, but you do not gain by telling them to shut up. That is classic uh, avoidance defense mechanism. You are strong enough. All right, which of these, in my job, just to give you a little sense of what I do, for 13 years, I've been a First Amendment attorney for a nonprofit called the Foundation for Individual Rights in Education, FIRE. We defend First Amendment rights for college students and faculty. And in our work, one thing that's been impressed upon me is that sooner or later, everybody is controversial to somebody else. Even people that you think shouldn't be controversial. I now live in Philadelphia. In Philadelphia, sports fans threw batteries at Santa Claus, right? Everybody has got somebody who wishes they weren't there. Mumia Abu Jamal, death row prisoner, doing time after being convicted of killing a Philadelphia police officer, has become, in many ways, a symbol of uh, the injustices in our uh, criminal justice system, or at least he was. And I was saying, how many folks have heard of Mumia before? Okay, a couple people, but but not that not that many. When I when I was young, Mumia was more widely known. Rodney Reed is a little Rodney more current. Rodney Reed, exactly. Thank you, Rodney Reed. Thank you, Sam. Noam Chomsky, famous uh, linguist and left wing scholar. Condoleezza Rice, former State Department, uh, former uh, Secretary of State at uh, the State Department under uh, the second President Bush, and the Dalai Lama. Each of these folks has prompted calls for censorship when they've come to camp campus. Somebody doesn't like each of these folks, even the Dalai Lama, right? So these are Facebook captures of students at the University of California, San Diego, who are um, studying in the United States, but are from China. And in China, the view of the Dalai Lama is different than it is the generally held American view. The generally American view is like, oh, Dalai Lama he stands for peace, etc. He's a, he's a humanitarian. In China, he's a dangerous ethnic separatist, is the standard line. So these are folks saying, can't believe it. How is it that UCSD educates their students about bias and equality while allowing, allowing a guy supporting the vision to come here? Everybody gets prompt uh, calls for censorship at some point. Here's Joe Biden when he was vice president. Here's Mike Pence, current vice president. They both gave speeches at Notre Dame. University of Notre Dame in Indiana. They were both protesting for different reasons. Biden for his views on abortion, Pence for his views on, and his uh, administration's act actions on immigration, but they're both the subject of protest, even Joe. <laughs> Here are your rights. How many of you folks are at a, at a public school right now, public high school? Okay, so we're a little bit happy. So we'll do, we'll do public high schools first. This is the baseline of your rights. This is a 1969 case, Tinker v. Des Moines Independent Community School District. Here's Mary Beth Tinker and her brother John. Just curious, how many people have heard of yeah. the Tinker versus Des Moines case before this month's reading? Fantastic. Great, very good. I'm, I'm really happy that you asked that because that also makes me feel good. I, for those who haven't heard, John and Mary Beth were opposed to the war in Vietnam. And their school district was generally supportive of the war in Vietnam. This was not a popular position. But they felt morally compelled to protest the war in some way. They were sick about what was happening overseas. So they fashioned these black armbands with the peace sign on them and wore them to school. They were harassed by their fellow students 
they were sent home by their schools. They were disciplined. They took the case up to the Supreme Court of the United States to see if students in a public high school, public K through 12 setting, have First Amendment rights, or if you check those rights at the schoolhouse gate. Folks who read it, what's the outcome here? Do, could they wear these armbands? Yes. I think the outcome was no because it caused a disturbance or something. Ah, I see. Now, you, you, you've got the standard right, but they could wear them because the disturbance was not material and substantial, but that's, that's the standard, right? So if you are engaged in some kind of expression, it's a K to 12 student, we're talking about generally outside of the immediate classroom, like walking the halls, et cetera, you generally have a right to do that. And it can't just be that the principal thinks, oh, if they wear this, there will be trouble. It has to be something more than just this general, unsubstantiated apprehension of harm. Absent a forecast of substantial disruption or material interference with school activities, and that's a real thing. Like it has to be like, oh, I know that if they wear that shirt and they wear that shirt, they're gonna fight. Absent that, you've got the right to wear it. Unfortunately, 1969, all right, so this is now 50 years ago. This is kind of the high water point for your rights as public high school students. This is about as good as it gets. Ever since then, the court has been chipping away at your rights. This guy here is Matthew Fraser, right? Smart guy, kind of a smart aleck. He got up at a school assembly at Bethel Senior High School to nominate one of his friends for student government. Yeah, <laughs> you know, Mark members. And what the standard was back then when you had a friend that's running for student government is that you gave a little speech to nominate them. And Fraser here, being a smart ass, said, my speech is gonna be laden with sexual innuendo, right? He said, let's nominate a man who's firm in his beliefs and firm in his pants, as an actual adult. He said, you know, it, 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 I, I won't go on. You get, a, you get a sense of it from that line. He did that for about 10 minutes, right? Now everybody was laughing, but the teachers were furious. He was honors list, he was you know, good to go, and he got in a lot of trouble. And he took his case up to the Supreme Court and said, you can't punish me for that. I was telling jokes. They were bad jokes. They were body jokes, laced with innuendo, but they were protected by the First Amendment. My God, this is America, right? But no. No, the court said, actually, that's a problem. Because schools have the job of inculcating the habits and manners of civility as values themselves conducive to happiness and indispensable to the practice of self-government. What does all that flowery language mean? I guarantee you this will be the only time in your life where you hear the word inculcate, which I, as a First Amendment attorney, get to say at least once a week, inculcate uh, to establish, to cultivate, right? To plant. Inculcating the habits and manners of civility, is that what schools are supposed to do or are they supposed to teach you? Well, the court says that if you want to self-govern, if you want to be here in this liberal democracy and participate, you're gonna to have to learn not to tell body jokes in front of crowds. I guess that's the idea. I guess, you can tell I don't like this decision, right? That's, so that's chipping away at it once. Here's another more recent blow. How many folks know this case? Yes, Morris B. Frederick, how many folks know it? All right, this says bong hits for Jesus. All right, did anybody, <coughs> wait, when I say the word, when I say the word to you, bong hits for Jesus, what, what, what does that bring to mind? Is it, is, it, is it just like a weed joke? Yes, sir. Like they're doing it for Jesus. They're doing it for Jesus, right? You are you're smoking yeah. marijuana for Jesus via, via a bong or a water pipe, right? That's the, that's the joke. <coughs> I just want to call everybody's attention to the fact that the I here is lowercase. This is maybe my favorite part of the whole case. So this goes up to the Supreme Court because these students are standing across the street from their high school in Juneau, Alaska, while the Olympic torch goes by, okay? <laughs> so they knew they were gonna be on TV. They are not on school grounds, okay? They're not on school grounds, but they're there. Frederick, the plaintiff, he hadn't even gone into school yet. He was late, but they showed up and they unfurled a 14-foot banner that said, Bong hits for Jesus and they're all disciplined. Again, even though they're not on school grounds, the principal, Morris, marches across the street and confiscates the banner, and they're all suspended. Frederick challenges it. I think the rest of them, I 
and rolled over and accepted the punishment. But Frederick challenges it, and it goes up to the Supreme Court. Now again, think back to that Tinker Standard. Substantial material disruption, right? What do folks think? Should this be protected? Anybody, anybody think this is so disruptive that you can't possibly learn? Is this going to interrupt your inculcating? <laughs> the court thought otherwise. The court said the banner promoted drug use. Because as soon as everybody sees this, right, you think, right, let's go. <laughs> it promoted drug use. And the failing to act, allowing the sign to remain up, all 14 feet of the sign, would tell the students that, you know what, it's okay to take bong hits for Jesus. So the school <laughs> actually had to act. And there's a lot of fighting in the dissent, right? The dissent's like, wait a second, what if this was a political message? What if this is reform marijuana laws for Jesus? What then? Is that protected? I mean, that's an argument, right? You can make the argument that marijuana laws are unjustly jamming people. Contrary to your interpretation of Jesus' practice, right, exactly. I think that argument has got a lot of pull. But the court said no. Schools may take steps to safeguard those entrusted in their care from messages that can encourage illegal drug use. So don't make drug jokes at school, because they're not protected. Yes, sir? If it were during school hours, would they still receive like, similar It's a great question, and that, that kind of question is still being hammered out in the courts right now. We, my group just filed a, a friend of the court brief uh, with the Third Circuit Court of Appeals, which binds Delaware, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, about a student on a public school, high school student, on a cheer, cheerleading team. And she posted on her private Snapchat, fuck cheer. Okay, I'm, apologies for the language, First Amendment guy, I'm sorry. <laughs> the, the student challenged it, say, look, I wasn't at the cheer event. I, this is my own private Snapchat, back off, right? At some point, the school loses its grip on you. <laughs> right, who's the switch? <laughs> Good question. So it comes up, and, and uh, the, the federal district court, which is the court right below the appellate court, right below the Third Circuit, said it was protected. That at some point, the school's long arm isn't long enough to reach into your private online speech. Yes, please. Uh, at school, recently. Say your name, Taylor. Yeah, oh, thank you. Taylor. Um, at school recently, we got like this contract that said anything that we do, like in New York, not even in New York City, like anything we do that someone brings back to the school, we can get punished for. So like, if they were like public school, right? Yeah, public school. So like, if we were to do that in like Upper East Side when we go to the Lower East Side, like that's they still school. got you. Yeah, they're, they're, I mean, the reason they're having you sign that contract is so that if something happens, right? So don't sign it. If somebody, if something happens and they want to make an argument, they're going to say you agreed. Uh, I'm going to keep going because I want to make sure we got time, but I, I'm around 